Mihilesh Kumar Srivastava, better known as Nadwalal, was born in the year 1912 in the village of Bangra in Bihar, one of India's eastern states which borders Nepal. There is very little information on his childhood, but the village folk, when interviewed, remembered him as an average student with a pretty normal upbringing. One man even said that young Mithilesh seemed more interested in playing football and chess than his studies. Mithilesh apparently first discovered his prodigious ability to forge thanks to his neighbour named Sahai. Young Mithilesh would be sent on errands to the bank for his neighbour and he soon learnt that by copying Sahai's signature, he was able to withdraw money from his account. However, Sahai soon discovered that his account was thousands of rupees overdrawn. Before any action was taken against Mithilesh, he fled to Calcutta and then took it upon himself to study a bachelor's degree in commerce. While studying, Mithilesh started up a cloth business, but it soon failed. He also worked as a broker for a while before starting his professional career as a criminal. The specifics behind why he decided to become a conman are unknown. His first arrest occurred in 1937 after being caught for the theft of nine tons of iron. Mithilesh had used forged documents to get the iron into his possession, but once the police caught up with him, he was convicted and sentenced to six months imprisonment. Despite this, he carried on with his cons and he didn't let this short spell in prison deter him. Another one of his first illegal activities identified by the police was what they called prostitute poisoning. Supposedly, Mithilesh would visit prostitutes and then give them drinks of spurious liquor. Once the effects of the alcohol kicked in, he would take off with their jewellery and money. It wasn't long until a prostitute identified him as he'd been using the same methods over and over and this led to his arrest. Despite having been caught, it wasn't long until he regained his freedom. Mithilesh decided that prostitute poisoning was too risky and returned to the small pickings that he earned by conning people. After this, he moved on to small heists at railway stations which transported cargo. Mithilesh had all the skills he needed to pull off these types of jobs. His father had previously been a station master meaning that he knew all the design details as well as its flaws. Secondly, his education meant that he had a good understanding of law, commerce and banking rules. But most importantly, he was a master forger. Mithilesh's strategy was simple yet effective. He would stroll into the railway freight office and check the list of goods waiting to be lifted. He would then issue fake release orders and checks to the railway authorities. This way, they would believe that the goods had been properly dealt with. The normal Mithilesh had to do was take the goods. He successfully executed this con a number of times and he would always vanish along with the goods. In the 1940s, when Mithilesh was around 30, he started to pull off bigger and riskier cons. Due to the effects of the Second World War, India was facing a shortage of textile goods. Mithilesh saw this as an opportunity to make a nice sum of cash. Along with an associate named Nutwalul, they posed as officers to the textile commissioner in Bombay. Then, they approached manufacturers who were keen to purchase large quantities of cotton. In order to persuade the manufacturers, Mithilesh forged false railway release certificates which stated that they had the goods and that they would be delivered to Azamgar station. However, before the deal was closed, Mithilesh demanded that the manufacturers give the pair a large advance on the cotton. Once the pair received their money, they went their separate ways. Evidently, when the manufacturers arrived at the station, there was no one waiting to receive the full payment, nor was there any cotton. This incident was reported to the police and after a fairly short investigation, they discovered that the mastermind behind the operation was a Mithilesh and soon after, he was caught. His associate, Nutwalal, escaped 
but the police got the pair mixed up and thought that Mithilesh was not Wolul. Because of this, Mithilesh didn't receive a serious sentence. After this point, Mithilesh Kumar Srivastava was nicknamed after his associate and became known as Natwalal. The name stuck, and in India, the name Natwalal became a synonym with cheating or pulling off a smart con due to his reputation. During the 1950s and 60s, Mithilesh, now known as Natwalal, began to scam wealthy people all around the country such as jewellers, bankers, and traders. In order to do so, he made sure that everything was meticulously planned, with every detail, just as it should be. He also rented a beautiful house, which had a lavish interior. The lifestyle he portrayed, as well as his contacts, were all designed to make potential victims trust him, and then fall for his schemes. Possibly one of his most famous cons, involved selling famous Indian monuments. Not Wallal posed as a government official and convinced foreign tourists to purchase certain monuments. He would provide authentic looking legal documents, all falsified by himself. If the stories are true, he was successful in selling the Taj Mahal a total of three times. Not Wallal also managed to sell the Red Fort in Delhi, as well as the Rashtrapati Bhavan, which is now the official residence of India's president. Supposedly, he even managed to sell India's parliament house to foreigners, and the members of parliament were included as part of the deal. Although it's very likely that Nat Warlal did pull off these scams due to gullible tourists, the specifics behind the deals are surrounded in mystery. In 1957, Nat Warlal pulled off an incredible prison escape, which has become famous worldwide. With the aid of an accomplice, Nut Wallen managed to get the clothes of a sub-inspector smuggled into his cell. He then bribed his cell guards by secretly handing them a briefcase filled with money. Once he was out of his cell and in his uniform, all he had to do was exit the prison. He made his way to the gate, and after a quick glance, the officers on duty saluted him and opened the gate, not realising that he was an inmate disguised as a police officer. He then proceeded to get into the car that his accomplice had waiting outside for them, and they drove away like nothing. Not only had Nut Wallal outsmarted the officers on duty, but he also got the better of his cell guards, as when they opened the briefcase, they realised that there was no money inside but only newspapers. Not Wallal had amassed a large fortune due to his years of successfully conning and scamming wealthy people. He didn't keep his wealth a secret, and he even shared it with the less fortunate. For example, he would return to his native village with expensive cars, wearing top quality clothes and expensive perfume. Then, he'd treat the whole village to a grand meal and entertainment, and he even gave money out to the poorest families. After this good deed, he would vanish. Natwalal was wanted in eight states across India for more than a hundred cases of various crimes. During his life, Natwalal was arrested a total of nine times, but sooner or later, he would always break out of prison and escape. On one occasion, when he was caught and sentenced, the state of Bihar convicted him for 14 different crimes, which totaled a 113 year prison sentence. However, this wasn't something that kept Nut Wallen away from crime, as he always tried to make daring escapes. Despite his escapes, he was frequently re caught and still ended up serving 20 years behind bars, albeit during different periods of his life. In 1987, during an interrogation, the police had no idea just who they had in custody. Soon they realised that the man they had caught for a petty con was none other than Natwalal. He was last seen in 1979, after he audaciously escaped while being taken for a trial in Bombay, and since then 
had been believed dead. They couldn't believe that this harmless, beer-bellied old man was the infamous Nutwallen. During questioning, he said, There are hundreds of thieves who posed as me, but I'm the real Nutwallen. Immediately, the security was tightened. By now, he was 73 years old, and his crimes finally started catching up with him. The police believed he was a shadow of his former self, as he focused on smaller jobs and resorted to the same basic cons. While in custody, he put on an act as if he were a defenseless, poor old man, but the police didn't buy it. He was very cooperative while in custody, as he knew what he said couldn't be used against him in court. When he began to talk about his past escapes, his eyes lit up and glimpses of a confident nut wallen were evident. He was always watchful and his addiction to crime was as strong as ever. In typical nut wallen style, again, he regained his freedom. His last arrest occurred in 1996 when he was 84 years old. At that old age, you'd imagine that he would cause no problems for the police, but that wasn't the case. On the 24th of June of the same year, Notwallen was being transported from prison to hospital for medical treatment. Despite being bound by a wheelchair, as well as having police escort him the whole way, he managed to slip past the authorities while at New Delhi railway station. After this, he was never seen again. Notwallen died in 1996 at Ranchi and was cremated by his brother Ganga Prasad. However, this was probably a farce, so the police would stop investigating. In 2009, his lawyer claimed that he had died that same year, on the 25th of July. He then requested that the more than 100 charges pending against him be dropped. It's unknown which date is correct, but in any case, the fact that he had two potential time of deaths 13 years apart, lives up to the legend that was his life. During his life, he had two wives and a daughter. In his native village of Bangra, he is remembered with pride. The villagers even erected a monument of him where his house once stood. In 1979, a Bollywood film called Mr. Nat Wallal was released based on his life. Nat Wallal is considered to be the greatest con man in Indian history. Thank you everyone for watching this video on Nat Wallal. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. And if you're new to the channel, why not subscribe? And we're very close to 10k everyone. So if you can share this with your friends and family, hopefully we can get there within a week. It would be awesome. All right. Thanks everyone again. And I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.